Hello everyone, this is the Agon Light board that I've just received from PCBWA. Agon Light is my new project, a 8-bit modern microcomputer. Um, this video is sponsored by PCBWA, they made these boards uh, for us for free, but I am under no obligation to review their board positively, they just asked for an honest review. And the first impressions are, are pretty good, the board looks solid, it's a thin board, only 0.8 millimeter. I'm glad they allowed me to ask for a thin board because it improves signal integrity and it looks very well finished, that's the first impression, very solid, very robust, but let's put it under the microscope to have a closer look because you never know what lies hidden <laughs> below the capacity of our naked eyes to see. So these are the pads of uh, the CPU and uh, they are pretty regular. Uh, you can see that on the top, the pads that don't continue on a trace, they are etched back a little bit more. That's normal. If the pad is uncovered on one side, uh, the etching process eats into it. Uh, but other than that, they are very regular. Um, the, the thinning is okay. You can clearly see the rectangle that masks away the, well, the solder mask in between the pads. And the solder mask in between the pads flows very well. Uh, these are the vias. Um, and you can see that the via holes are almost invariably very well centralized in the via pads. And that was a surprise for me. It's very difficult to do that because these holes are only 0.2 millimeter wide on pads of 0.4 millimeters. And if you look at boards from other manufacturers, the same dimensions, you see they are less well centralized. They are still within tolerances. This works, but it's a lot less well centralized than this board from PCBWA. Uh, so that was a pleasant surprise, uh, these well centralized uh, holes and the, the, the very consistent solder mask in between that fine, those fine pitch uh, pads. Now this is an area of a lot of congestion in the design, so that's why I'm, I'm looking into this area. Some of the vias have, have been filled with the ink uh, of the uh, silk screen, <laughs> which is nice. Um, more vias there, some of the return path vias that are not connected to anything and the normal signal vias. And again, everything pretty regular, pretty well centralized. All the traces have clean edges, not jagged, uh, ununiform edges. Uh, so yeah, what is there to say? I'm pretty happy uh, with this. Uh, these are now, uh, it's coming, these are the pads of the ESP32 together with the USB chip above that I will show in a second. These are the tiniest pads uh, on the chip and again they are very regular except for the little extra etching when they are not connected on one side which is perfectly normal and unavoidable. Um, the thinning, the pads, the solder masks in between this fine pitch pads to prevent short circuits when they are soldered together. Uh, Pretty good, very good quality for, for a prototype PCB manufacturer. That's the USB chip, also very tiny pads. The solder masks flows very regular, regularly in between the pads. Very happy with that. Should not have any short circuit problems uh, when soldering this. And finally, because this is a thin board, I wanted to look at the through hole plating. When the board is very thin, it's more difficult to do that. There is less surface vertically. Um, but in so far as I can see under the microscope, they are plated through perfectly, no issues there. So all in all, pretty good. I also used some uh, SMD assembly services from PCBWA. Uh, I asked them to to uh, reflow solder all the tiny components, which would be you know a hell of a job to solder one by one. I don't have the time to do all that. And the ESP32 and the USB chips, because they have these QFN packages with the, the, the pins underneath, very difficult to solder. You certainly cannot drag solder those, uh, at least not easily. So they did that for me. So let's have a look at the quality of their reflow uh, soldering process, their assembly services. And it started with well, not, a, not too good a surprise. As you can see there, they put solder paste on all the pads, including the pads that they were not supposed to solder. And I asked them about this and they said most hobbyists ask them to do this. And indeed I believe this because there is this, this tale in, in the community that it's easier to solder 
SMD components if you pre-thin the pads. That's not the case. Uh, those bumps make it impossible to align the chip. The pins we want to go in between the bumps, not on top of the bumps. I will show in, a, in, a, in the next video how to uh, undo this. I undid this with some solder wick, so that was not uh, really a problem. Um, they told me that next time they will not do this for me or, to, or, or for anyone who asks them to not put uh, uh, solder paste on pads that they are not supposed to solder themselves. That's the way to go. Now these are um, the solder joints of the ESP32. There's a little coil there, an inductor that I placed for the coupling. And what we are looking for here is to make sure that there isn't uh, um, too little or too much solder paste and it's just right. And we are looking for consistency across the solder joints. And as you can see, they are all consistent. They look like one another. Uh, the surface is smooth and shiny, so there has been no you know, dry solder joints. They followed the proper reflow profile correctly, because that's the only way you would get this nice, shiny looking, uh, self-consistent uh, solder joints. So pretty happy with that. Let's look at uh, the pads on the USB chip. Which, which are also very tiny, also QFN package. And again, they are consistent. Uh, that's what the IPC requires, that they be consistent. No sign of dry solder joints, uh, no sign of too much solder paste or too little solder paste. The joints should work uh, very well. Pretty happy with that as well. And as a bonus, we can see some of the solder joints of the smaller discrete uh, component. Now let's look at some of the bigger solder joints. Uh, what we are seeing now are the pads of the micro SD card socket. And there is consistency there. Although consistency here is less important because these are bigger pads. But you can still see there some of the pads. You see this one now that's coming from the left is in the center now. That doesn't have that smooth surface. But it's not a big deal. These are large pads. There will be more than enough contact uh, being made uh, there. And again, some of the smaller components, also looking at the shininess, uh, making sure there is no excess solder or anything. And they all should work. So I'm quite happy with that. So I proceeded and drag soldered uh, the, the fine pitch QFP packaged uh, chips myself, the CPU, the SRAM, and the PSRAM, uh, soldered in uh, the through hole components. That's the final uh, look of um, Agon Lite. Uh, this 8-bit microcomputer and microcontroller in, in one. It's a self-standing, self, uh, standalone computer and it produces its own video, audio, it uh, controls its own keyboard and has over 20 GPIOs plus, you know, SPI, serial, all kinds of other connections. So you can control your house from a basic prompt <laughs> with this computer. But uh, what I want to show now is visually the board is okay. But let's see if it works well electrically. And I'm looking at the two high-speed serial connections between the CPU and the video coprocessor, which also reads out the keyboard. And uh, I'm adjusting the oscilloscope now, and I designed these lines to have perfect signal integrity. But of course, if the board is not good, then we lose that perfection. But as you can see there, the signals are indeed perfect. The board is electrically working top-notch. It's not putting down the, the, the quality of the design. There is no ringing, um, there is no crosstalk, the levels are bang on, 0 volts and 3.3 volts. Um, the signals are, uh, are sharp vertically and horizontally. Um, now I'm looking at the other way around. Um, again, uh, the, the CPU echoes the character codes that it receives from the video call processor, which also manages the keyboard. So you, you have the same signals both ways. So I'm looking at them both ways. And it's excellent signal integrity, electrically and visually. This is an excellent board. I'm very, I'm very happy to give PCBUA a thumbs up. Uh, this is a sponsored video, but I would be saying the same even if it were not a sponsored video. I hope you've enjoyed this. Next time, a soldering tutorial for the SMD parts. Take care.